After most of the taint had drained and the dead had been tallied, only fifteen in all if you count Bishop and his guards, work began on salvaging equipment out of the other towers. The Stellator twins had announced that their workers were going to move operations to Philadelphia. Meanwhile, Peppermint hadn't been made, even made an appearance. I assumed that she had finally had enough of this town and gotten out of here, with no pony was looking. The town had returned to its normally quiet self. Planks of wood stretched between the buildings to keep the ponies off the taint-coated roadway. Be careful with that! Longbow winced and held her hoof out as I tinkered with her left forecuff on her empty armor. I held the large metal tube in my mouth, pulling out and opening a small metal jar from my saddlebags. The large bags swung in the breeze as they hung off the marauder's driver's side mirror. There are some very sensitive parts in there. Are you sure you know what you're doing? She bit her lip as I slid one of the pneumatic pistons out of its slot. Sky and Carlotta had already gone to bed, seeing as they had both been up all day, and had to fly my heavy flank away from the taint flood, but I wasn't tired. Longbow had wanted to do the daily maintenance of her armor, but she had burnt out her magic earlier in the escape, and needed my help. She had been hesitant to let me touch her suit, but ultimately agreed when she kept overexerting herself, trying to do it herself. I swear, unicorn magic makes their kind the laziest ponies ever. Look, I can fix anything. It's what I do. I slathered some grease from the jar onto my hoof and turned to her and glanced back at my cutie mark. The set of meshing gears embellished on my flank had been a great source of pride to me ever since I was a colt. I'm a mechanic. If it's got parts, I can fix it. Longbow seemed to relax slightly as she watched me work on her armor cleaning and greasing up the metallic shaft before slotting it back into the leg. I thought you were a merchant. She responded slowly. Her voice told me that the question was more personal curiosity than just trying to figure out if I had lied before. I looked over the leg of her armor again before setting it down with a small sigh. It's an added benefit of my talent. I reached up to unhook the other leg from her suit. I didn't figure it out until a while after I got my cutie mark. How did you get it? She asked with a note of hesitation. I sat down and blinked for a few moments before looking over to her. She blushed a bright red as she shrugged, her blood-stained velvet dress softly billowing the wind. If it's too personal to share, it's fine. I smiled and shook my head. No, I don't mind telling. It's not sp uh, spectacularly interesting. You know, that's what every pony has said when I've asked. And it's always been more interesting than they make it out to be. She said softly as she rolled her eyes and fidgeted her forehooves together. I looked up and thought, squinting as the bright floodlights of the Stalator Tower steamed down on us. Well, in the settlement my mother, brother, and I used to live in, we had to earn our keep off scavenging. We lived along one of the Great War's battle lines, picking up over the rusted hulks of tanks and small camps. I paused for a moment to wipe the greasy uh, hooves on my saddlebags. The off-white sacks, so dirty and worn from use, it had turned to a deep brown. Anyway, one day when we were just looking around, I happened upon an extremely rusty artillery piece. The way it was turned up defiantly towards the sky, refusing to succumb to the will of time, just fascinated me for some reason. The more I looked it over, the more I just had to keep looking it over. Eventually, I found that not much was wrong with it. One of the recoil buffer pins had completely eroded away, and the breech latch was slightly bent. Both of those were minor, minor things, and any pony else would have missed it. I held my hooves up and mimicked, picking up small objects. I looked around for a while, until I noticed that the ram rods used for the loading shells were nearly of the same thickness. So I used one of the skeletal soldier's uniforms to make it a uh, stick, and forced it in there. I motioned like I was smacking the pin in. Why did you want to fix it? Longbow asked quietly. I mean, you couldn't sell an entire cannon to some pony, could you? I chuckled softly. Like I said, it seemed to be calling out to me. I don't know why, but it just felt wrong when it was in such condition and missing such simple parts. I wanted to make it whole. I mimicked holding my hooves around a bar. So. 
After I had the new pin in place, I tried my hardest to bend the breech lock back into place. Little did I know that the gun had a new spells on it, allowing it to fire as soon as it was safe to do so. When I bent the lock back, I accidentally sealed the gun and set off the spell. After the smoke cleared, I was so stunned that I made the cannon work again. These gears appeared. So, but what does that have to do with being a merchant? She asked as I closed my eyes and smiled at the memory of the old cannon, opening them again to be nearly blinded. For some reason, I kept forgetting that those giant lights were up there. I'm just not that smart of a pony, I guess. Well, after I learned how to fix things, I started to bring broken things back home to the house. As it turned out, even simple things like toasters have a demand in the marketplace. I started to sell whatever I could and noticed that my keen eyes and ears could pick up on the little things ponies did when negotiating. I could observe when they knew that their bid was far too low. I could see when they thought it was a fair price. And I could hear what I was being f forcing them to spend everything they had. So you made a living off of ripping ponies off. Long both sighed as her expression dropped flat. On top of cutting me off, she sure knew how to jump to conclusions. No, I never charged more than a fair price, and I always undersold the competition. Well, except for when I started competing with Ditsy Do, I trailed off into a grumble. I shook off the annoying thoughts of giving things out for free, and got back to looking over the power armor. So? She called out with a doubt filling her words. You've never taken advantage of any pony because of your talent? A sharp shock ran down my spine as she reminded me of yesterday with peppermint. I forced a smile and looked nervously up to her. Um, wow, you know, I could use a bathroom break. I got to my hooves and took off to canter over the hill towards the river. I'll be back in five minutes. I turned my head and called back to her as I crested the slope, slowing to a trot as I approached the bank of the Rhine River. I don't want to lie to her now. She seems like a nice mare. Not to mention. I froze as movement to my right caught my eye. A small silver sphere was flying along the riverbank. I turned to face it as it came closer so I could see it was a sprite bot. Oh, it's you. I said as I rolled my eyes. You shouldn't sneak up on ponies. The bot bobbed in the air silently for a moment. Can't you see me coming on your EFS? My what? I racked my brain for why that sounded familiar. Oh yeah, Brass called on my compass that morning when... I trailed off mid-sentence. Then, there I go remembering what I did to Harmony. I sat down and beat my hooves against my head, sharply for being such a stupid pony. You okay there, Backlash? I could hear the slight tone of worry over the oddly robotic voice as it came over the speaker. Yeah, I'm fine. Just trying to deal with my mistakes. My head throbbed as I blinked a few times. Honestly, most of the time I keep forgetting all the stuff in my vision means things. Well then, I wanted to tell you that I... The sprite bot started to speak before Watcher's words were replaced by a set of low chirps. I listened as my pick up seemed to emit them back quickly. As I tried to find a pattern in the tones, there was a sharp crack on the speaker before silence. Um, Watcher? I said slowly as I prodded the metallic sphere with my hoof, a slow sigh emanating over the speakers. Some ponies been commandeering the sprite bot network periodically. It's getting really annoying. Isn't that what you do? I tapped a hoof on the dirt with a smirk. Yes, it is. This has been happening every 20 minutes or so, to the second, for the last 24 hours. The sprite bot bobbed slowly, past me while Watcher spoke, turning around and floating back after a few feet, almost as if pacing. At the very least, I have a good reason for these sprite bots. And what would that reason be? Honestly, I wasn't quite sure why he was doing it. I assume if he had wanted me to do something for him, he would have asked by now. Maybe as a ghoul he just wanted, uh, he was really bored and was entertained uh, so that he wouldn't go feral. Well, you see, it's complicated. The hesitation of fear in his words were evident through the distortions. 
He didn't want any pony to know, but since he hadn't asked anything of me really, I didn't want to press the issue. I see. So you wanted to tell me something? I shrugged as I looked into the swiftly running river. I'm almost out of time, but it's about the pink... I mean 42. He said as my ears perked. I just spotted her as she left Whiny. I just thought you should know that she's headed towards the a power substation there. And why the hell would she go there? It's not a very secure building, with minimal supplies if any. Only some simple uh, floor stores and a couple cots, probably. The gears in my head screamed to a halt when I fit something in. I turned quickly and grabbed the sprite bot between my hooves with a gasp. Watcher! I need to know if Pallet's in there! I stared wide-eyed at the small orb as it stare, uh, stayed silent for a moment, before a soft crackle announced the return of the loud, upbeat polka the robots were known for. I let the sprout bite go, watching as it bobbed along the riverbank slowly until it was out of earshot. I just hope the Watcher got my message. I need to know if Pallet is still alive, and if 42 leaves her alone again. I couldn't just go in there on a hope and prayer that she'd still be alive. What if it wasn't the one of 42's traps? I turned and slowly made my way back up the hill, feeling my body yelling for more rest to recover from the night's events. As I crested the hilltop, an odd sight befell my eyes, and I wasn't quite sure what to make of what sat before me. Longbow looked half-dressed in the separate sections of her armor. Some of the pieces hadn't been put on quite right, clamping closed on both the dress and her mane and tail. It had forced her to contort into holding an odd and presum presumably uncomfortable pose as she grinned over at me nervously. A uh, little help, please? She said with a slight amount of shame in her voice. It's just a teensy bit harder than I thought it would be to put this on without magic. She wobbled unsteadily, and I couldn't help but shake my head and giggle softly to myself. You know, you're kind of cute when you ask for help. I fired back playfully as I walked over and started to unhatch the suit. It might have well been Dawn, because the blush she gave seemed blindingly bright. She fidgeted as I got the last few pieces off, and walked towards the room. Thanks for tonight, Backlash. She said through her sniffle, her words denoting happiness. My brother would have been proud to know you. She said softly, shutting the door as she went inside. Bed sounded good, but the prospect of having to live through the nightmares another night was just enough to keep me going. I had just put everything back in my saddlebags as I sat on the edge of the parking lot. I could make out the low rumble of thunder on the horizon, probably a storm system moving in. At least a little rain might help wash away some of the taint. I reached my hoof over and clicked on the radio on Pip Buck, listening as Sapphire Shores reminded me of just how lonely a pony could get. My thoughts drifted a bit before DJ Pon 3's soothing voice refocused me to the radio. Now, time for news, my little ponies. Now pay attention, fillies and colts. The pool has been closed. Indefinitely. Details are still coming in, but it seems that the tower housing the king known as White Bishop was demolished, and the resulting collapse flooded the town with a large amount of taint. Who knew that making the pool a little dirtier could help make the wasteland a cleaner place for every pony? As much as it sounded like it was going to help, nothing is going to change. The Stalators were going to open up shop again, and Soap Pony will start produ uh, producing more liquor somewhere else. The cycle will never end. So, what pony have I been told we have to thank for this extraordinary feat? He inquired with a tone of eagerness. Oh, Celestia, he can't. That's right, every pony. The same Wasteland Crusader who's been hot on the hooves of the Pink Mare. I have a proposal to Mr. Backlash and company. If you're ever around the Ten Pony area and have some free time, swing by the broadcasting station so I can give you the good ponies of the Wasteland an interview with a stallion who's finally making a difference. Oh, and when I say free time... I mean, any time you aren't eradicating troublesome gangs, toppling underworld kingpins, or fighting the good fight against the scourge of the pink mare. I turned off the radio and closed my eyes as my head sunk, waiting to beat myself back into wasteland obscurity. If my notoriety keeps getting inflated at this rate, 
Every gang and settlement in the Waste is either going to try to kill me, refuse me, or ask for my help. I don't even have time to deal with m a Moron and his plans yet, let alone delve into some pre-war bunker of Steel Rangers. Every day I spend doing other things, 42 gets closer to finding where the pond was taken. My ear twitched as the night breeze picked up slightly. A humble voice carried softly along it. Sleep. My eyes went wide as I froze, the words echoing softly in my mind. It had been the same voice I heard when this all started, but I knew that voice now. Harmony! I called out as I spun around and rocketed towards the marauder, slumming painfully into the sight of it as I peered into the back seat. She was just the same as she had been the last day and a half, laying stiffly on the floor with a bloody hole punched through her neck. I didn't know what I was expecting. Ponies don't magically come back to life after being dead for days. I turned and slumped against the car door. How could I have heard her before, if I didn't even know she existed a week ago? It... is it just my mind playing tricks on me? Or was she always destined to die by 42 hooves? I felt a spike of pain in my head as I tried to think, the breeze kicking up and chilling me to the bone. I hooked a hoof over the open window frame and pulled myself back up, looking down at the large mare again. Harmony. I could barely even form the soft words as I hung from the window. I'm sorry. I slowly stepped back and walked towards the door to my room, taking one last look back the marauder's back seat before slipping inside to sleep. Sky was sitting awake on the bed, holding Carlotta's head as she stroked the blue feathers softly. She smiled softly as I looked up at her. I did my best to return it, but couldn't muster the energy to keep it up. I laid down against the door and let out a ya long yawn, closing my eyes as my mind tried to tell me I'd just have more nightmares. I thought to myself that if I have them, then I deserve it. The last thing I thought before I succumbed to the will to sleep was that because there was no escaping what I've done, I might as well buck up and face it. I shivered and was jolted awake at the feeling of something slapping against my flank. I lazily, lazily, lazily looked up to see Carlotta repeatedly opening the front door against me, the cold morning air biting at my skin between slaps. She smiled down at me as she watched me curl up and shake from the near-freezing temperature. Are you a merchant or a doorstop? Get up already! She teased as Longbow got to her hooves and from her seat at the table. He's a mechanic. The blue mare retorted smartly as she walked into the bathroom. The gruff griffin sighed. He is in the way, she said as she kicked me lightly. Uh, fuck off, Carlotta, I said as I tried to get comfortable again. No metal walls here for you to force me up with. I smiled as I closed my eyes again. Yeah, but the tub in the bathroom. She smiled and replied slowly. Have you ever heard the sound of talons on porcelain? All right, all right, I'm moving. I said as I stretched my legs out painfully. It probably wasn't the best idea to sleep next to the door anyway, but frankly, I didn't care. It was a night without dreams. And to me, that meant it was the best sleep I had gotten recently. Carlotta, I need you uh, to talk to you and Skye about something. Where is she? She went for a morning flight around the town to stretch her wings. She leaned down to me and pressed her beak against my muzzle in annoyance. Something I've been trying to do for the last five minutes, except your flat, fat flank, has barricaded us in. So move. Thanks for the amazingly flattering update. I grumbled as I got to my hooves. Claudia swung the door open and gave me a face full of feathers as she smacked me out of her way with her outstretched wing before she jumped up and took off. I peeked my head out of the door, noting that it must have rained earlier like I thought, leaving small puddles scattered around the lot. A long train of ponies caught my attention as they carried salvaging equipment up along the roadway and over the bridge. Why, good gracious me, if it isn't the style and I've been searching for. An overly enthusiastic voice called out from Ripcord's office. A cream-colored mare with a, a build not unlike my own strolled casually out, 
sporting oversized sunglasses and a straw-brimmed hat to cover her light blue mane. She wore a plus-sized, ornate pink dress and walked with deliberately dainty steps. I'm terribly sorry, Backlash. She had been rather insistent on speaking with you about a job. Ripcord called out as he poked his head out of the office window. Uh, huh. Hello, miss. I don't think I've ever met this mayor before. I think I would have remembered some pony covering uh, their anger by a forced smile as hard as she was trying. Maybe she was related to one of the victims from yesterday. Better stay on guard. No, oh, do pardon me. Where are my manners? I am Miss Jackpot Stalator. She bowed slightly as she spoke. And I've come to make a request of you. Her voice faltered at the end of the statement. So, she was one of the Stalator twins. No wonder she was pissed. Oh, and that she wanted something from me but didn't send one of her lackeys, bent that she had to be holding out. Well, I'm pretty full on jobs that I have to do. Your request will have to wait. I said with a note of disappointment. Although I don't like to work for ponies like her, or Myron, I was still curious about the job. Maybe it would be something mundane. Well, now, it'll only take but a moment of your time. She grinned the same evil grin that Myron had given me, reaching up and unbuttoning the top of her dress with a hoof to let a small metal bar spring up under her muzzle. I tensed up reflexively as she moved to bite down on the bit of her hidden battle saddle, slipping into sats before she could fire. I mentally relaxed as the targeting spell coated her as an outline of pink before I pulled up my inventory. I looked down and highlighted the party cannon before stopping. If I fired the cannon at her, the ball would continue through her and either hit Ripcord or one of the innocent ponies moving things in the background. The only option for me was to use Heartstopper to kill her. That way, there was only a minimal risk of injuring Rip. Wait, why the fuck am I rationalizing killing ponies? Is this how Sky has to think about things? Fuck, I just want my old life back. An odd realization hit me when I thought about Heartstopper. I had never used a gun before. Sky had always been there to protect me, and I had the hoof-eye coordination of a drunk when it comes to doing things other than fixing something. Also, I don't really count the party cannon as a gun. It's more of a destructive device. You know, like plastic explosives. No moving parts and such. If I let Sats do the work, how could I screw it up? I selected the sleek shotgun and watched as a flash of purple struck it in my mouth. Looking over the small heart inscription on the gun, as I thought to cancel the menu. As the targeting information came up, I used the uh, poor thoughts of the words, I just want to end this quickly, and Sats closed promptly. I was thrust abruptly back to the real time, watching as Jackpot's hidden battle saddle fired, punching holes in her dress and sending one of the rounds into my vest harmlessly, and the other side's shot uh, grazed across my right hind leg lightly. Her eyes went wide as she realized that I had somehow armed myself, and that she had failed to kill me. A bit down on the shotgun grip, pulling the trigger as I glared at her. I had only seen ponies shoot shotguns before, really not really knowing um, that they shot a spread of metal balls, and that they were reflectively, relatively easy to use and fix. Nothing prepared me for that shot, the party cannon being my only real experience. I had ever expected Less recoil. A lot. Less recoil. The shotgun jerked my neck to the side sharply as it flung from my mouth. Jackpot's screaming, winning over the ringing in my ears as several holes opened in her left forehoof. She uh, kneeled on her good leg as she, the other blood thick streams under the concrete. I got my bearings back as the door opened behind me. Myron walked up beside me, holding a small revolver in his mouth and smiling at the injured mare. You! She spat out between whines. You are behind this? Myron's answer was simple, firing a single well-placed shot through her sunglasses. Myron spit out the pistol as Jackpot slumped forward onto the ground. Longbow came crashing through the door behind us, wearing half of her armor, looking around wildly before setting her sights on the pale stallion. I looked up to gaze, uh she was giving, and turned around, stepping between her and Myron. 
That mare tried to kill me, I said firmly, staring straight into her blue eyes. Myron killed her in my defense. Longbow leaned over and looked at the bloodied mare, studying her before going wide-eyed. You? That's... Jackpot Stellator. Carlotta and Sky came racing back around from the side of the building, galloping to a stop next to me. Sky and I heard gunfire. Is every pony all right? Carlotta said quickly. She seemed to be quite shaken from such a simple exchange she hadn't even been in. Jeez, Carlotta, since when did you turn soft? Myron teased. Fuck off, Myron. At least I have friends. She countered back sharply. The young stallion grumbled and grabbed his gun again, before turning and heading back to his room. I nodded and giggled slightly, holding out a hoof to Carlotta, happy to see her hoof bump me. She gasped and grabbed around my slightly bloody outstretched leg, looking over closely before she let it go. It's just a flesh wound. You should be alright as long as we clean it out, Sky said as she rummaged around her saddlebags. She walked over a bit and bit down on Heartstopper's grip, lifting it and depositing it into my saddlebags, uh, looking over at Ripcord's office. I was worried when I couldn't see him, and that a few of the pellets from my shot had punched into the small room. I cantered over to see him lying on the floor with his hoof over his chest, and a small puddle of blood around the side of his head. Fuck. I turned my sore neck and yelled to the group, Sky! I need help! I maneuvered myself over to him and moved his hoof away. Fuck, what am I supposed to do? Get him conscious. I slapped his muzzle lightly. Come on, wake up, buddy. Don't be dead. Ripcord let out a tough groan as the rest of the group tried to pile through the door. He reached up and rubbed the back of his bloody head as he opened his eyes. Were you hit? Sky called as she stepped up and kneeled down next to the olive pegasus. What was that? Rip said as he sat up, pulling his hoof away from his head. I have to ask, did you speak up? He looked from his bloody hoof where his ear should be, but it was nothing more than a shredded mess. I think it may have struck my head when I dove to cover. It would explain this dreadful aching I seem to be feeling. We all let out a collective sigh of relief as Sky took a few minutes to wash and wrap up the last of our uh, medical bandages around his stumpy ear. Thanks again, Miss Skyline, for applying your medical skills to my expertly dress my grievous wound. Rip turned and gave her a tight hug as she patted him on the neck. No problem. Just try and keep it clean after you take the bandages off. Sky said as she took a step back. Anyway, Carlotta mentioned you needed something. Backlash? I nodded and looked at her. I hate to ask this, but do you think you can go and get the Sky car? I want to bury Harmony at the garage, but... She put her hoof over my muzzle softly, and nodded slowly. I hugged her tightly, and thought to myself that finally, I can do what I promised.